All right, let's take a look at uh, this paper, 4494. And um, in this paper, it has some of the stuff we've just talked about, and so I thought it'd be interesting to, to illustrate it with some, some practical results. Are there any particular questions that people had about the paper that we can try to answer right away? What's the goal? What's, what are they trying to accomplish in this paper? Nothing? Determine the rate constants of dimerization um, of 17 E complexes. Right. Why would they be interested in something so esoteric as that? Any, any, any insight, our inorganic student? Communication, maybe? Get bond strength? Yeah. That's a pretty, I would say it's a pretty uh, basic research sort of topic, uh, right? It uh, probably has to do with, um, you know, what's the electron structure, electronic structure of these things like? And they're trying to get some idea by doing electron transfers. and and seeing what happens when we do it. Um, let's not worry too much about why they're doing it. Let's take a look at some of what they've done. They've got two, uh, two different types of compounds. One, compound one, and um, let's see, I want to make sure I understand the, the two. The, reaction, the reactions of one, which is, uh, has the metal in the system of chromium, molybdenum, or tungsten, right? And um, what's number two? Two is is the CPCr CO three, and three is the um, is the um, substituted with the methyl groups on the cyclopentyl rings, right? So one, they sort of expected that because of the way these are made, the rings uh, being the way they are would be sterically hindered and they thought they had an equilibrium. They have an equilibrium between the dimer form and the chromiums and, and the uh, monomer form, which is illustrated in the first situation. The equilibrium constant is um, much, much less than one, which indicates that most of the material is in the form of the uh, dimer, right? But it turns out that the dimer, and the dimer and the monomer both can be electrolyzed, but they're a different, electrolyzed at different potentials. And so here we have a scheme that illustrates the process. The monomer can be reduced at a particular E0 and a K0 to the monomer m minus, or the, rad or the anion of the monomer. The dimer can undergo a reaction also to form the dimer process. In the meantime, the monomer and the dimer can undergo an equilibrium process and the monomer and the dimer can also, the, rat, the minus monomer and the minus, the anion of the monomer and the dimer can also go in equilibrium process to the dimer. What happened when they did, look at number um, figure one, it says CV, experimental CV of solution of two in methylene chloride. That's done at a room temperature there, 0.1 volts per second and they see a normal looking CV and they simulated that normal looking CV. And what do they suggest is the situation there in figure one? What's 
happening there. This is a reduction of the, uh, they've added the, they've added the uh, dimer, right? Or is it, is that right? Right? So they see a one electron reduction for the dimer. But they, do, they really don't expect that. They expect that the, if it's a dimer, it's going to be a two electron overall reduction, right? So the initial reaction is the dimer is undergoing an equilibrium to the monomer, and the monomer is undergoing the reaction that they observe in figure one. So what kind of scheme is that? What's the scheme that, that would be in our, that we've just talked about? What would they call that? CE. Uh, it's a CE reaction, right? And where are we at on that system? We're way over on the, let's see if we can, uh, Where are we at in this zone? In this part or this part or where? It has to be one of the two, right? Can't be this part. The diffusion control. What is the, what's the value of K, large or small? Small. Small, right? So. We can't be over here because if we were over here, we would be in this part of the region. So we have to also, that also implies that the overall conversion rate, Kf and Kv, is, is, is sm somewhat small under those conditions. All right, so that, so what's they say? It says this. The experimental curve is a characteristic of a diffusion control one electron process. No features were noted. Um, the second, the formal potential of, of this is for that monomer couple. At T is equal to 243K, at lower, t and what they did is they lowered the temperature, a second wave increased relative to the first until about V equal to 50 volts per second until no further changes were apparent. In figure two, the lower right trace represents this fast scan frozen equilibrium limit. So let's look at figure two. The lower right trace, that would be this one here, figure two here. Frozen equilibrium, what do they mean by that exactly? It's not, we've, we've, we've lost a little bit of our direct, it's not no longer quite a CE case anymore. What have we got? We've got this, so let's look at our scheme. equilibrium is frozen in this particular case. What have we done? They've, they've increased the scan rate, <coughs> which means that uh, this equilibrium probably is no longer going to be operating for them. Or at least it's stopped. I mean, the KF and KB, remember, have to be somewhat slow because we're over here in this part of the region at the low scan rate region, so the equilibrium now is much slower to be, you can't really attain the equilibrium during the time scale of the experiment. So whatever we've got for M and D is now stuck in this point here, right? Whatever initial values of M and D are there, are there. The, the equilibrium is stopped. 
so we can't change what there's there initially. What's it there, if they add the dimer, what's gonna be the predominant form in solution? If they put in dimer, what's gonna be in solution? Or it doesn't really matter if they put in monomer either. What's gonna be in solution? What's the equilibrium condition? Is it gonna be towards M or towards D? Towards monomer. K is, they said K was small, and so the equilibrium was for the, for the uh, dimer to the monomer, so that means that they're over in the dimer side of the equation. Right? That clear? They're dimer. Because, so we've frozen out, most everything is in the dimer part of the, everything's in the dimer. There's a small amount of monomer there, but it's so small that we don't see a wave for it. So what happens when we reduce that dimer? We see a wave for that dimer at more negative potentials Let's compare minus, it's about minus 0.8 for the monomer, which was in figure one. For the dimer, that wave occurs at minus 0.1 and a half or so, right? So significantly more negative, we shift it out by that amount. So they're, they're saying that's because it's the dimer now that we're reducing. It's got a more negative potential. Okay. Why don't we see now a reverse? Why isn't that dimer reversible under those conditions? It's going to the monomer anion. Right. What's the equilibrium like for the dimer, the anion dimer to the monomer the anion? Large. Yeah, it's a large value. So this is um, the way we've drawn it. This equilibrium is much larger than this one. And the way this we've drawn it is that this equilibrium is much larger. Okay. So as soon as we make the monomer minus, as soon as we make the dimer, equilibrium shifts it back over um, there. What's that suggest to you about the rate of that equilibrium? Is that a fast equilibrium? Is that the is that rate constant fast or slow? Remember, this rate constant has to be pretty slow, otherwise we would never be able to freeze out that system. We wouldn't be in the right zone. But this one has to be pretty fast, right? Because otherwise we would not be able to make any of the amount or minus in the time scale of our experiment. So what happened, we make the dimer Almost immediately, the, di the dimer anion, it boom, falls apart to the monomer by an equilibrium process. The monomer, that's a fast reaction. The monomer now is no longer able to be reduced. It's all, any monomer that's the anion is stable at that point because that would be the point where the monomer would already be <coughs> reduced anyway. So we have to wait till we get back to Point, minus point 0.8 again to see the oxidation for the monomer radical, or the monomer anion back to the, the parent monomer, okay? So that's why we see this kind of funny looking wave in, fig, in figure two that looks like it's irreversible, but in fact it's irreversible in a, in a very strange way. It's not electrochemically irreversible, irreversible it's chemically irreversible but not so in a, in a very different way. Again, we don't see, and if we did a, probably if they did a scan, they wouldn't see a, they would see now a nice wave for the monomer in that particular case because it's still frozen out in that particular form. And they don't do that, I don't know why they didn't, that would have been a good, nice thing to have in there. But let's look at the, you know, you can see that transition at one volt per second. You see the, as we're starting to freeze it out, we still see a lot of monomer there because there's the equilibrium is sluggishly allowing that monomer to be there during the course of the scan. Uh, and then, but we do see some, see some dimer and then more and more we increase the amount. And um, the figures four and so are just, 
uh, ways they've done to simulate some of the some of the processes. But in table one is the is the um, some conditions they saw, and they can put in K zero and alpha values and 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 so on. Table two is the kinetic parameters for the K sub D. Which are the um, which are the parameters for the uh, reaction? Notice that K sub B is very fast, as we'd expect. K sub M is quite a bit slower, as we would kind of expect, and um, the equilibrium constant is small, as we as we also saw. They don't have a I, don't, I guess they don't have a number for K sub M minus. Okay. The other thing about the uh, the system is that then they look at the uh, the methylated system, CP star, and what they see at figure five is that the reaction now must be the same basic reaction, but now it's much more rapid because if you look. If you compare figure one, they've done a scan rate at 0.1 volt per second. Figure five, they see almost the same looking scan rate, but it's uh, CV, but it's at five volts per second. Also not at room temperature, it's 50 degrees less than room temperature. And so the rate must be much more rapid in order um, to still see that thing. What that means is that um, uh, in order to freeze it out, they have to uh, they have to go that much more rapidly. And they had some trouble, but they're starting to see some evidence at, even at 2,000 volts per second. Uh, and so they're, they're suggesting the basic results I think are the same, but the, uh, the methylated group for some reason is much faster than the, the non-methylated group. And they have, an, uh, they have a um, sort of a, uh, a description. I guess the end point is that they had uh, the transition state must lie close in structure to that of the dimer. And um, I'm not sure if I can uh, comment on if that's true or not. Anyway, kind of interesting how this, you know, that's not really a, a scheme that we talked about, but it's a related to the schemes that we can, we can make a one part, by certain conditions we can make it the scheme we'd like and uh, convert it from one scheme to the other under, under these conditions. Okay, any other questions you had about it? rapidly through all this stuff today, so I would suggest that you spend a good time, good fraction of time looking over that chapter and understanding. Uh, what I talked about today is what I really want you to understand at the surface, you know, how these, what happens when we have a chemical reaction, how the peaks change and, and shift around, but in order to really understand what's going on, you have to think about it clearly and understand very clearly what's going on chemically and diffusionally at all these points, and that requires a little bit of reading and thinking and looking at those curves and doing the simulations to really get a good concept of some of these, what's going on. It took a long time for me personally to learn this, and it really until I did the simulations, I still had, was unexpected, getting things that I didn't expect, but then I reflected on reflection, I discovered that they made sense. So it's not straightforward to understand this. All right, well, uh, next time we'll talk about some photo
electrochemistry and semiconductor electrochemistry. We've got a paper to talk about that, and uh, so we'll talk about that next time.